Hello, my name is Andrew Birch. I'm 16 years old and I don't really know how to start this video. That's a lie. I do know how to start this video and I've done it three times already. Four, because I'm re-recording because I messed up the f***ing microphone. I do know how to start the video. I know how to end the video. I don't know everything that goes in between. I'm here today to talk about the 2024 presidential election of the United States of America, which is a country I have mixed feelings about. On one hand, it's where I've lived my entire life and I've never left its borders and I'm not dead. On the other hand, according to the Watson Institute for International and Public Affairs, the U.S. post 9-11 wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Yemen, and Somalia have taken at least 4.5 million lives and counting. So there's that. How am I supposed to remedy these mutually exclusive feelings of warmth towards the American project and universal disdain for everything it's ever done as the most imperialist, evil, and neglectful world power the world has ever known ever since British owned like 80% of it. You see, I was born and raised in America. I was born in Moscow, Idaho. I've lived every day of my conscious life in New Mexico and I spend several weeks every single year spending time with my rural family up in Utah. I've never been in an airplane and I've only spent like four days east of the 90th meridian or whatever it's called. I think it's safe to say that I've been exposed to and steeped in almost every facet of American life. From the liberal suburban American dream that I live in to the rural farming country that my family spends time in, I think I have the right to speak on America as a topic. Which is why... I don't know. I don't know. I wrote this video to convince you of something, but I'm still not sure what it is. Part one was going to be talking about America's founding and the socioeconomic crises which led to the creation of American democracy as we know it and how it influenced the rest of the world. The good and the bad. Part two was going to be talking about this specific election and what makes it so significant as a reflection of American society. And part three was going to be this, monologuing like a child. I mean, how much hubris do I have to have to admit that this election is barely going to affect me and then still go ahead and make this video? Sure, it might affect the economy when I leave high school and go into college, but I'm still the paragon of the conservative ideal. Except for my long hair. I usually don't wear it in a ponytail like this. I wear it in whatever the frick Mr. Bertram has. I live in a single family home with a nuclear family and loving religious parents. I can't walk 30 seconds without the block before being reminded of just how trapped I am. I have no in-person community in my neighborhood and I can't see the smiles of other people when I walk out the door. It's exactly what they are fighting for. Sorry, that sounds like I'm being mean. And I am. I started this video with the goal of being impartial, but as I was researching part one, I lost all of my patience. Why am I the one telling impartial voters to grow up? I'm working so hard to get this video out before the election, and everyone I know has already voted. There was a Trump rally a few days ago in Albuquerque, just 50 miles from my house. Somehow I had even worse aim than those other guys. I sincerely apologize. So I was able to hear him cry out for people to vote on election day before finding out that most of the entire crowd had already voted, and he wasn't going to change any liberals minds because they had also probably already voted and we saw his pathetic attempt to save this clear waste of time while permanently trapped in his paranoid box of delusion. And then he had to pretend he was fine with it even though he was so adamantly against early voting like four years ago. I mean, this much lying can't be good for your heart. Like, you only have one year left to live, man. Please do something more productive. But then here I am, desperately trying to say something through the meaningless, noisy spew of this vile election. I'm cisgender, heterosexual, Caucasian, neurotypical in the eyes of the law, and a fourth generation European immigrant. I am the person that Trump is trying to campaign for, and I do not understand what he is selling. I mean, I don't understand a lot of things. I can't even vote because my brain isn't fully developed yet, even though I have to spend hours every single week researching every single college and every single scholarship opportunity so that I can get out of this country. I have plans that I cannot share with you right now because the haters will sabotage me. You know what was this year's first snowfall today? I woke up all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and I looked out the window, and then 30 minutes later, I could already see the rot. Every little imperfection in the flat dirt tearing away at the perfection of a cleansing force of beauty. In a perfect world, everything would look like Sonic Generations, but God has made many mistakes, hasn't he? Every Sunday, I would go into that building and learn the three things God said. One, spread his knowledge to everyone so that no one goes to hell. Two, be nice to people so that you don't go to hell. And three, don't drink alcohol or coffee. Coffee is illegal, but not Monster or G Fuel because coffee is a hot caffeinated liquid, which is uh, different than a not caffeinated hot liquid. And a caffeinated liquid, which is served cold. 
Coffee sucks anyway, so my Swedish assimilation is not going to work out very well. I mean, they certainly didn't say that I should vote for this guy, the guy who is not following the doctrines of don't divorce people and don't have sex with children. You know, I've met my first not family Trump supporter recently. I've certainly talked to my conservative family members about this, but this was the first guy who I didn't know not to broach the subject with. It was in my AP US history class and we were talking about the economic systems under Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton. Isn't that, isn't that messed up that I said Alexander Hamilton with that like rhythmic cadence, but I didn't say Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton. Lin-Manuel Miranda, what have you done to us? Thomas Jefferson strongly believed that the United States should never have manufacturing jobs. The writer of the Declaration of Independence believed that Americans were ordained by God himself to never step foot in a factory, lest they be sullied by the terror of poverty and community. And now Trump keeps standing around trying to convince people that bringing factory jobs back would restore the long lost glory of our perfect nation. I'm going to call this guy Gabe because Innuendo Studios used Gabe to refer to the archetype in the Radicalizing a Normie video and also because his name is Gabe. Anyway, I mentioned this to the guy sitting next to me in class and the first thing he pivots his attention to is immigrants, which confuses me because I wasn't talking about that. How do you care so strongly about the truth of history that you go to an AP US history class in a liberal state and then still try to side with the political cartoons that I know you don't support? So all he's talking about is how he wants to fix the immigration system so that more people can go in the right way. He just doesn't want people to skip the line. And I try asking him to explain why illegal immigrants are bad in any way at all. And he can't come up with a single counterexample. Instead of trying to argue, he figures he'll make everything right by showing me some funny memes because we are children and comedy is the only way we can cope with the horrifying realities of the world. So anyway, he's scrolling Twitter to show me a meme and he opens his account called Garbage Human and all of the memes are racist. I tell him, this is racist. It perpetuates stereotypes, and regardless of how funny you genuinely believe these to be extraneous from the aspects of racial prejudice, you really shouldn't be sharing them. Not that cleanly, of course. Everyone's better at argument in retrospect, but that was the gist. And then, instead of responding, he just scrolls further as though I had seen the wrong meme. Except the thing that he scrolls to isn't a meme, it's a political statement. It's some newspaper clipping saying 100 million communists dead, which is a long debunked talking point. Here's a video about that. And the caption reads, who do you think is responsible for these deaths? Then I tell him to read the comments because I believe there will be many anti-Semitic conspiracy theories and dog whistles in there. I'm ready to explain to him that while he might not hold hatred in his heart, these subtle anti-Semitic images could be extrapolated and he really shouldn't be spreading things without understanding the real underlying messages and goals behind them. Luckily for me, I don't have to do any political analyses because all of the replies are entirely mask off. And then he goes silent and he just like shows the meme to the other person in our table group and hopes that they'll laugh. And they do, because we're all children. We are 16 years old. We don't have the right to vote, and honestly, I don't think we should, because this guy clearly does not understand the consequences of his actions. Except I feel like I should be able to influence the election, because I and people that I care about are going to be impacted by the results. And I know that people he cares about are gonna be impacted as well. Come on, man, we live in New Mexico. These are the demographics of our high school. This is the place for illegal immigrants to live, and notably, that makes it so that I care about the illegal immigrants. I would like for them not to be removed from our community. The next day, I finally ask him who he would hypothetically vote for. And he says Trump because he would give him a bigger paycheck. I ask him to name a single economic policy from Trump, which might make him have this very strange idea but he can't offer one and it's like do i think that i'm better than him because i can watch a youtube video by a bunch of australian centrists or read wikipedia better than him no i don't believe that anyone is better than anyone because that's what democracy is and even then i am scientifically demonstrably inferior to most of the people that exist in the world right now i am insane and I know that I'm insane, and I can't do anything about it, but wait. But like, am I not insane because I know that I'm insane and I have this level of self-cognition that I know that insane people don't have? No, I really want to, but I won't start a Discord server, and most of the people watching this will know exactly why from experience. I know that my judgment is clouded, so I don't make any judgments at all, and I trust the people who trust me to make them for me, and the people who trust me is no one, because who would trust a teenager about anything? I know that much, why don't I know that I shouldn't have the right to vote? All I can do is worry and worry about the outcome of this election, and how it's going to ruin the first couple of years of my adult life, and worry is the worst emotion because it arrives entirely because of powerlessness should i organize my school to fix this 
Sure, I could do that. I am the only one with the means. I'm probably the person at my school who is most capable of doing that as editor of the school paper. But a liberal stronghold blue state holding a walkout is not going to change the opinions of the only people who will hear it who have the same goals as we do. Yes, that article will definitely get rid of climate change and microplastics. I mean, <laughs> I can't do anything at all except this. And this is worse than useless because all it does is undermine my credibility by making me seem desperate. I said I didn't know how to start this video because I did know how to start the video. I didn't know how to introduce the things which matter about me beyond the fact that I don't have the ability to know what matters to me and that I matter to no one in discussions of the future, even though I'm the one who's the most affected by this choice. And that's a very privileged position to take because I'm definitely not impacted by this choice nearly as much as the people who are not allowed to make any impact on this choice. Convicts, illegal immigrants, Middle Eastern civilians, people who actually want to buy a house because they've fallen for the misanthropic trap of home ownership. So, I guess I just give up. I give up. My name is Andrew Birch, and I'm afraid. And I know that that's not enough, but there's plastic in my blood. It's unseasoned.